Welcome to the Jill on Money Show. It's Tuesday, January 24th. It's pub date, gang. The Great Money Reset is published today. If you did not pre-order, don't worry, you can still order as many copies as you can afford. No, not as many, but you know, it makes a nice gift. So if you are interested in ordering the book, The Great Money Reset, you can do so on our website, jillonmoney.com. And by the way, there's a huge chapter all about the IRS. And now with tax season open, I think people just need to spend a lot more time paying attention to their taxes because it can really be part an important part of a great money reset. So happy tax season. I'm glad that it's open. If you've got a financial question, if you're thinking about your tax liability, if you're worried about what's happening next in the world, maybe it's a recession, maybe it's not, who knows? Just give us a holler. Go to our website, jillonmoney.com, click the contact us button, and do let us know if you'd like to come on the air with us live. That is what Ira did. Ira is on the line from the Garden State of New Jersey. Hello, Ira. How are you? What can I do for you today? Hi, Jill and, and Mark. I'm a big fan. Uh, I appreciate uh, you taking the time to talk to me. Also, I have to say, uh, on a couple of occasions, you've made a funny comment about uh, somebody being an all-state bassoonist, and my son actually was one. <laughs> Um, <laughs> That's awesome. Did um, it make it? Did it mean that he got to um, to actually go to school for free? Uh, he went to school for half to a fairly expensive school, so it was wow. definitely worth it. Wow! Oh, all right. Well, that's pretty darn good. Jeez. So, okay. Well, what brings you to us today? Well, so um, I handle mom's finances. Mom is eighty-seven. Uh, Dad died uh, almost three years ago. Mom is in an assisted living facility, which, as you probably know in this area, is fairly expensive, runs about $10,000 a month. So mom's got about $400,000. A good deal of that came from the proceeds of the house sale. And I've moved that today uh, mostly into money market funds and and CDs. Uh, The CDs are paying about four and a half right now and a little bit into a couple of I-bonds. She also has dad's inherited IRA for about 83000 Now, dad had two-thirds of that in stock funds. I'm wondering if we should, um, at this point, just totally get out of the stock funds and, and park that also in CDs or money mm. market funds. Now, for the next 30 months, I would say about half of the long-term care bill is taken care of between a small uh, long-term care policy that she's got and her social security. So between those two, she gets about 5,700 a month. Why did you say in 30 months? Why is it limited to 30 yeah, months? That is the, that when the long-term care is gone? There's $100,000 left on the long-term care policy. Um, so that's roughly, and, and they cap it at 3,300 bucks a month. So that's roughly 30 months. Okay. How's mom's health, by the way? Mom's health is okay. Okay. You know, not not terrible. How old did you say she was? Eighty seven. So let me just review. Ten grand a month. What is there anything besides the ten grand a month? I don't know. I had to pay for extra stuff like medications and boo boo boo. I mean boo, a little a, a little thousand. bit. Yeah, sure. We pay her um Medicare supplement. You know, she likes to go to the hairdresser at least once a month. The unfortunate cable bill is about two hundred bucks a month. At that facility you have to arrange for your own cable, uh, T V and, mm-hmm. and internet. Um, so yeah, she has, let's round it up between the Medicare supplement and everything else to say her other expenses are a thousand dollars a month. Okay. So 11 grand a month is the total. And for right now, the, for at least the next two, two and a half years, half of that is paid for through the, um, long-term care and social security. And so what is the, where are you taking the other half? Are you taking that from the money market account? Like, what are you doing for the other, you know, 50 grand a year? Well, I I take enough from dad's IRA to meet the minimum withdrawal requirement. And then I take the rest from, um, you know, the money market account. If you look at mom's tax liability right now, I had a call like this just yesterday. We were talking about someone's aunt. Do we know like what her total income is? For example, I mean, I know the long-term care benefit is not taxable income to her, just the social security, plus I presume any interest or dividends that she might receive, plus the IRA. But do you know what her what her total income was last year in 2022? It, it, virtually no taxable income. 
like, well, like 40, 30, 40, because we do have 2,400 a month for social security, right? Right. And some income, right? Yeah. Off the top of my head, I'll say 40. Okay. So you're doing the minimum required distribution. What is that? What is the RMD for dad's account? What has it been every year usually? I want to say it's seven or 8,000. All right. So even if we just bumped it up like to 10 or 12, I would bump it up a little bit. I'd like to, you know, try like get, let's get some of that money out of there. She's in a low tax bracket. You use the rest of the money in the money market to come up with a difference, right? Okay. But I guess the question is, what should I do with the stock funds in dad's IRA? I'm going to tell you right now. So if it's two thirds, one third, I probably would flip that. I would probably make it stocks one third and bonds cash two thirds. And and where is that ha- um, inherited IRA held? Uh, Fidelity. You're managing it, right? Yes. Okay. So the stock funds are like just a plain old index fund. What do you have? There's an index fund. There's the Fidelity balanced fund. I mean, you know, uh, a little bit of contra fund. All right. Well, go whatever. Keep whatever stock fund you want. I mean, I'm always happy with an index fund, but I I, I would really be. I would be much more inclined to flip that around, low, low, low risk, and and do not touch that money in the money market CDs, I-bonds. Like, in fact, in your Fidelity account, if you wanted to, what what are you getting paid on your your money market inside Fidelity these days? Well, no, I took that out of Fidelity. That's actually at Marcus at about 3.3%. Perfect, perfect. And the, the CDs are within the Fidelity umbrella, but at, at you know, four, four and a half percent uh, at some major banks. You could totally do that. You know, by the way, you could build a little IRA. You could keep like maybe just 20 percent in stocks and build the rest as like a CD ladder to mature at various times in the future. Right. Because, you know, that we know that in 30. Well, we know what we need this year. Right. For the half for the two and a half years, we know what we need. You can build your bond ladder in this IRA account, and it'll probably be done by the time the 30 months is up, right? I mean, I think. It'd be close. I would keep a teeny bit in stocks just in case, like a little inflation, you know, kind of like keeping pace with inflation. And But, you know, you could just kind of build a bond, a CD ladder, and have the money mature when you know you're going to need it. You know, in advance of the year, you say, okay, I need, you know, 30 grand this year. Or I need 30 grand next year. The fo- And then you're done. In three years, it's done, right? And, and then, you know, don't, again, if you have to dribble it out a little bit more, that's fine with me. But uh, because, you know, obviously I want to stay in the 12% tax bracket. But other than that, I wouldn't do anything else. This is a very boring portfolio that you need to manage to just pay bills. We also have another $200,000 that was dad's life insurance proceeds. And years ago, dad was smart enough to put that in the name of the, of the beneficiary is myself and one of my siblings. So it's not in mom's name. So that if at some point mom does have to go on Medicaid uh, to pay for a nursing home, uh, we could supplement that for Good. a better room or something like yeah. that. That's great. But like, I mean, if your mother were to live like 10 more years, you're probably going to end up plowing through all her money. I mean, there's nothing else to do about it. Like you pay for it, right? Right. Her facility does have a set aside a certain, you know, in New Jersey, they have to set aside a certain percentage of rooms for Medicaid residents. So she could probably stay in the facility. What about you and your life? Are you, I mean, if for some reason, okay, Here's another question. What happens if she needs more care? What if she just isn't okay in assisted living? If she had to step up care, what if you had to get another set of hands in there to help out that she needs some sort of more significant care than the assisted living facility could manage? What would happen then? Well, we'd probably have to transfer her to a nursing home. That would obviously cost more money. Or maybe not. Close, though. I assume it's around the same plus maybe 10, 20%. Um, one of my siblings and myself could could help supplement that if we have to. Now, okay. um, my wife and I, uh, my wife is retired. I'm, I'm still working. We're both 65. I have a, a base salary of about 350 and my bonuses during the year average about 200. Mm, look at you, big shot. 
You're making a half a million dollars a year. You're almost rich, when, except that you live in a high cost area. We do live in a high cost area with a very high property tax bill, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Probably work another couple of years. I mean, I have a fairly low stress job and I like what I'm doing. I guess my personal question is, I have a small mortgage balance left, 120000 but the mortgage is at two and a quarter percent. I mean, I look at let's say the money in a money market fund at 3.3, but 3.3 after tax comes down to about the same as the two and a quarter. Yeah. You know, so should I just take? No, 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 no. (laughs) How about that? Was that clear enough for you? (laughs) No. Let me do that slowly. No, 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 no. How much money do you have liquid? I mean, unless you tell me of $10 million, like, but what do you have? What's in your non-retirement assets? How much money? My non-retirement assets, I would say, are um, about eight hundred and fifty thousand. And your retirement assets are how much? My retirement assets are about one point seven. Okay. And does your wife have a pension that she's entitled to? No, no. The one point seven is uh, some of high, her IRA, yep. plus my IRA and four hundred one k. Okay. No, do not pay off the mortgage. Um, first of all, you know, even if you just, yeah, true, money market is paying 3.3. You could get a one-year CD and they'll pay, they'll pay you four. But well, I, that, you, even four after taxes, probably so pretty but close like, to the two and true, a quarter. True, but, but the reality is what if you need your access to your money? Once you pay that off, that money's gone. You have lost the opportunity to actually have access to that money. And all for what? Because you emotionally don't want to have a mortgage anymore. I know you don't. I get it. Nobody wants to have a mortgage. But having access to your money is much more important. And now at least, instead of me fighting with you and saying like, it's okay to lose money every year based on inflation and based on taxes, now you're actually breaking even. So breaking even to have access to your money is far, far more important than whatever peace of mind you think you will actually get from having the mortgage paid down. And you actually may have like real expenses for your mother. So no, I don't want you to pay that down. You're going to do it anyway. I hear it in you. You're about to fuck me <laughs> on this. So I don't really, I'm going to tell you something. You're going to do what you want to do. It's not a good decision. Even, even though I still have an unused $200,000 equity line. Totally. Who cares? That is not, no, absolutely not. Are you going to sell this house? We don't envision moving anytime soon. Um, you know, we have children in the area. And, and like somebody once said to me, you know, so if your property bill is $20,000 a year, you know, is it worth that? You know, is it worth saving that to not be near your kids and then potentially grandkids? This is nonsense. Listen to Aunt Jill. I'm really like your kid. Okay. By the way, like I'm like your younger, smart ass sister. Do not pay off the mortgage. I know you want to. Please don't. Just don't. I gave you another shot. How about we get another look after you retire? And by the way, don't retire so quickly. If you're like, I think I like my job and things are pretty good and da, 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 da. You know what? Making a half a million dollars a year is very helpful. Go make me another 120 grand and pay off your stupid mortgage. But I need a few more years from you. Okay. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate you coming. Poor Ira. I I beat him up a little bit, but I just beat him up on behalf of everyone else, right? Because I know you all have that desire. So if you are, you are, this is a sandwich generation kind of situation right here. And now two calls this week of people taking care of their older relatives and trying to make a good game plan. Are you in that situation? Maybe it's the other way. Maybe you're helping your kids. Maybe your adult children are needing your help. If you think that you have any sort of cash needs that are necessary to fund something in the future, you need to get in touch with us. Go to jillonmoney.com, click the contact us button, let us know if you'd be willing to come on the air. And yes, today is pub date for the Great Money Reset. I'm sorry if you can't join us for the webinar, but you can still buy the book. So go to the website and order the book. Do something nice for someone today. Change your work, change your wealth, change your life. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow.